Let's decorate this grungy envelope journal today. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. If you clicked on this video without having seen part one where we create the base of this envelope journal, I suggest you go back to watch that first and you can find the video link in the description box below this video. So I let this dry completely overnight and I feel like you can see the gray coming out a bit more now that everything has dried and I just love this look. Super, super grungy. Love it. In the next step, I want to add our corner tuck spots that we created last time. And obviously we need to add some papers to those as well. These are all the scraps I have left from cutting the papers for the other pages. So I want to make use of these, even though none of these are going to be big enough, but I like the fact that I can just piece some parts together, which should give a fun effect as well. And I can just use my ruler to draw the lines where I need to cut. I think these journals are great, specifically if you don't feel confident enough to make a whole junk journal. I think these are a lot quicker and easier to make. And I think you can feel really accomplished once you've made one of these. And I think that might help then to eventually maybe create a bigger one if you want. I want a torn edge in between here. I don't just want to cut this straight. I'm going to choose a different piece. Always be sure to erase your pencil lines before you add the Distress Ink because once you add the Distress Ink, it's going to be very hard to remove that pencil line. I have tried that in the past. <laughs> it didn't work so well. And now I'm just going to tear this edge. And then we'll glue it on like this. But first I'm going to ink it up, including this tear here because I want that visible. I think that adds to the grunginess. And you could have also, of course, done that for these pages. If you didn't have enough left over to cover a whole page, then of course you could piece this together, which would look super cool and even more grungy. I think I'll first glue these two together. I think that might be easier. And then we can glue the whole piece down. Like that. And I'll just do the same thing for the other side. This already fits perfectly. Wow. So I just need to cut out a piece that will fit here. Okay, then again, I will tear a piece here. Here you can see again how it reacts instantly. You already see the gray coming out here. So cool. Make sure your pieces are completely dry before you glue them down. Otherwise you might have some tearing, which as you know, you can always patch up, but it's obviously better to decide yourself where you want to patch things up <laughs> rather than having it occur unintentionally. Okay, great. Now we have two grungy tuck spots. Next, I want to add my two signatures and I will make them pretty thin because when we look at this, this has already bulked up just from adding wet media. So I don't want to make this super bulky because I do still want it to close. So I think I will only be adding a maximum of five papers per signature here. And of course, I'm only adding one signature on each side. I'm lucky to have access to a lot of beautiful different kinds of vintage ephemera. Some I got from the flea market, some I received in Happy Mail, some from my Goodwill. You can always just add different book pages or magazine pages. But if you want a vintage look and you don't have access to original vintage ephemera, then I will link some downloads for you in the description box as well that you can check out. So I'm going to choose five papers for each signature. Just a nice variety of some fun pages and different shapes. Oh, 
Oh, this is the perfect height. I'll just cut it down a little bit. Tearing straight is easier than cutting straight. It's of course nice to add different colors of papers. So that's two, three. Royal Crown Cola receipt. <laughs> Fun fact, I used to work at Coca-Cola here in Vienna for about three months. And then I had a burnout. <laughs> it was absolute madness. I was working for the boss of three different departments, 400 employees in total in those departments. It was, it was sheer craziness. Never want to do that again. This one is tearing too easily. It is so brittle. I think I won't use that. That will be better for a collage where I can just glue it down. I think I'll take this one. Okay, so that'll be one. And the second one, we'll use another dictionary page and we'll tear that down as well. Then let's take this one and this one. It's three. This receipt. Four. And how about some of this paper? I usually put them together so that there's layers already from looking at it from the front, meaning that I always put smaller papers in front of bigger ones. I just happen to like that look. And I also don't like to place them all in the center. So I like to vary the height. That just creates more interest. And then in the inside, we'll just add the invoice. Before sewing these into my envelope journal, I want to think about the rest of the decoration for the journal. And I printed out these magnificent vintage flowers. They're called exotic flower cards. I will put them in the description box below. As a reminder, this is a Digital Collage Club design team project. And I just love the drama of these. Do you see how expressive they are and how bold the colors are? I just love it. And I think the style will go really well, basically with any vintage style. And you see how grungy these edges are. I think they will work really, really well with the grunginess of the base of our journal. So I'm going to start off by cutting all of the flowers out. I'm cutting these with my scissors, by the way, because for some reason my paper trimmer does not like this paper. I printed these on 110 GSM matte photo paper, which is why the colors are nice and vibrant. And what I really love about using images from the Digital Collage Club is that I never have to worry about limiting myself to what I use because I'm worried about spending more money. I just love that because it is a flat fee and it's incredibly well priced, I just love that I can browse and choose whatever I want to combine with what without having to worry about it costing extra. And I appreciate your feedback because so many of you have written in the comments of various videos how much you're enjoying the club and how much money you're actually saving by not buying all these individual digitals. <laughs> Having said that, you might know that I have my own digital shop. <laughs> No, but I think uh, Tina, the owner of the Digital Collage Club, is doing such a great job and her concept is fabulous. It's not my concept. It's not what I am doing for my shop, but I'm happy to support a shop with a concept like this as well. And even if you're not a member, I highly encourage you to check out what Tina has in her shop. You can just browse it without being a member. You then just can't download the printables, obviously. Oops, I forgot one. And there's tutorials as well. And yeah, it's just incredibly versatile, something for every style. Going back to the front cover and the front flap, I think I want to add a very prominent image to the front. And I think one of these two would be great because they have very strong colors. Yeah, I think I like this one best. 
And I want to grunge up the edges a little more, so I'm going to tear them and bend them and just make it look more worn and vintage this way. Then I'm going to, of course, add some more Distress Ink around, or Distress Oxide, around all of the edges. And then I'm going to splatter this with water as well. I'm curious to see now the difference with the photo paper. I dried this quickly with my heat gun and here you can see all the gray that came through. But I don't think I see it more than with the regular paper that we had here. So that's interesting. In any case, I like that it has more than one color and I think this is going to look really nice and grungy on this flap. Let's see what it will look like with some coffee dyed cheesecloth. Yeah, I like it because it adds another layer of texture that we can see and feel. So I'm ready to glue those down. I'm gluing this image down on a little bit of an angle. I think that creates more dynamic. I also want to add one of these to the back side, but I don't want one that's quite as flashy. This might work. Oh, I like this one. Yes, this is it. I'll do the same thing by scrunching it up and kind of tearing the edges as well so that it matches the one in the front. But I will not be adding the cheesecloth underneath because I think there should be a difference between the front and the back. Let's go back to the inside. I want to add a little booklet thing in here that will then just flap over this page like that. I printed out this page again that has the little birds which I now covered up in the front. And I think if I fold this in half that should probably fit. I'm going to use my tearing ruler to tear the size that I need. Now, it might not be able to go in all the way because if you remember, we added glue here. So that glue obviously spreads a little bit to the inside and I don't want to tear it by trying to open it further. So I might have to cut this down a little bit. Yeah, it only goes in this far. So I'll just tear it down a little bit more. But actually I don't want to tear down the beginning of the word here. I don't want to lose that. So I'll just tear down the part in the back that's going into the envelope. Yeah, now it goes in all the way. And I'm going to line the inside with some coffee dyed paper. I also want this to have torn edges. So I'm going to first cut it and then tear it. And it'll be a little smaller than the image on the front, but that's fine. I've inked up the edges. Now I'm just gluing that down. And then I'll do the same thing as with the images. I'm going to just go around the whole thing and add some splatters and see what that does. So I've done exactly the same thing and this is what it looks like. Pretty groovy, huh? <laughs> and it also went through to the front side so that's cool as well two in one and since we have some numbers and letters and everything going on in the rest of our journal why don't we add some of these letters and numbers from this tim holtz stencil i don't know the number there's nothing on here 
indicating what number it is, unfortunately. I think that's enough. So then I'm going to fold this in half. Not in half. <laughs> yeah, it's further down here. I already had the crease. Then I need to ink up these edges as well. I used to have the illusion that making a smaller journal would be less work. <laughs> But it's not really because you still need to work on every piece of ephemera. So this time I don't want to cover up the birds. So those are going to be on the inside when we tuck it in. But this flap is going to be on the outside. So this is where I want to add some more interest. Let's have a look at our beautiful exotic cards again. Oh, I like this one. This might be perfect. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. So I grunged this one up as well. And I also want to add something underneath. I found this one, which is a beautiful scrap from my friend Honey. And I'm going to add that underneath. And even though it doesn't really have a lot of the same colors, well, actually it does. I mean, it doesn't have the yellow, but this green is also in here in the background. So I think it really matches well. And I'm not even going to ink this one up. I like that it kind of has some more bright colors underneath and I don't think it needs inking. Have you ever heard of the Japanese word kintsugi? It's a very interesting concept. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery by mending the areas of breakage with lacquer, dusted or mixed with powdered gold, silver or platinum. So you can see some photos right here of some pottery with kintsugi. And I want to use this concept to highlight my wrinkles here with some gold paint. So I have my Inca Gold. This is fast drying metal gloss paint. And this is old gold. And I'm going to see if I can just do that. Oh yeah, this is going to look gorgeous. Oh wow, I'm in love. This is my first time trying this. Obviously this will only work if you have glued your paper down so that you have wrinkles that are actually, you can't really see it, that are actually coming up. Meaning when I glued this down, I didn't flatten it, but I scrunched it up while gluing it down so that I have these very deep folds. And how cool does that look? Yep, this is my new favorite technique. Because what I really love, it's so subtle, you know? It's not like bam in your eye. It's super subtle and delicate. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, I did not glue the image in the front down in this way. It's pretty much flat, even though it has some creases, but there's nothing protruding. So unfortunately, I can't do it here, which makes me super sad now. But it is what it is. But what I could do is kind of add some gold to the edges here. You could also use gilding wax, of course, or just regular gold watercolor or gold acrylic paint. All of those are options. So again, it's very subtle and I like that. And I, of course, have to do it on the back as well. And I don't want to add anything on the back, not only because I want to preserve this cute bird image, but also because I don't want anything to get in the way of putting it inside. So I want this to stay smooth like that. So let's put this in here. And that can be like that. And we could just open it like this or we can pull it out completely. Then I wanted to make two journaling cards for these tuck spots right here. 
and I'm going to use these two images. I cut two pieces of cardstock so that they fit in these tuck spots. And I'm going to cover this side up with some more of this paper that I printed out. So this is what they look like now. Didn't do anything to the back except distress it. So I've distressed all the edges here as well. So then I want to add these two images and I want to add some more interest underneath without making it too bulky or too layered because they're going to go into our tuck spots and I don't want anything to get caught. So I have another beautiful piece from Honey. I'm so lucky, which I think works beautifully under this. And then I have this one, which is from a very old project. <laughs> it's just a scrap that I didn't throw away. And I would actually love to have this here on the bottom, but I'm afraid it would get caught. So I'm going to turn it the other way around to be on the top, which is fine as well. And I'm going to leave it white because I like the contrast it provides. Now, since I don't want anything to get caught, I'm not going to tear and crumple up the edges, but I am going to crumple it up and try to add some kintsugi to both of these. So I've glued these pieces on the cards. And before I do the kintsugi, I also want to add a little bit more stress oxide because I again want to do the splattering effect here to add some more grunge. There we go, beautiful. <laughs> so I'll crumple these up first because I think that will make it easier to add this image with some creases. Then I'll add glue just like I would normally. And then I'm adding it by kind of squishing it together to form these creases. So let's add the magic. Add them to our tuck spots. I do think this is a bit plain, so I want to add some more interest to that by tearing out some parts of these two images. I think for this one, I want this part right here. I can add a piece of this under this piece here as well as a piece from here this was the one that's very brittle where I said this will be good for collaging just need a tiny piece mm -hmm. and then let's take another piece for this side And I think that's all it needs. The glue came through on this one and it made this cool purple design. <laughs> Happy accident, I would say. And then this is the other one. Then I want to add some more stenciling in this spot right here. I'll use the same one that I used before to make everything look cohesive. I think that's enough. 
it's so interesting i thought i had moved this stencil because you see the two and the nine but actually that's how the stencil is made look <laughs> i never noticed that before i think it's time we need to check our bulk situation and to see whether our signatures will actually even still fit here or whether we should leave this to just be a folio It has definitely become thicker, but I do think it should be okay to add the signatures. We should try that out before we actually do that, right? <laughs> so one goes here. And the other one goes here. No, that's wrong. The other one goes here, right? I think so. Well, we could do either, but I think originally I wanted to do it like this. Oh, that's doable. Yeah. Okay, good. Now I'm relieved. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sew these in with a pamphlet stitch. I don't know yet whether five hole or three hole. And then I'll show you what that looks like. If you don't know how to do a three hole or five hole pamphlet stitch, I suggest you just look that up on YouTube. There are numerous tutorials on how to do it and it's super easy. You can totally do it. Don't be discouraged. So that's the first one in. Usually I would measure my holes, but since this is so small, I thought it was fine to just eyeball it. And as you saw, I chose the five hole pamphlet stitch. So you can see the stitches here. And I'll do the same thing for the front one. And I'm going to attach the flap as if it was part of that signature. Finally, we need to attach the closure here. So I want to add an eyelet here and I want to add some of this packaging twine, but I want to add some gold to that first. So let's figure out approximately how long this needs to be. I want it to wrap around twice and then I want to be able to tie a bow. So again, instead of this paste, you can just use acrylic paint or watercolor paint or gilding wax. So if you don't have a crocodile and eyelets, but you still want to make this kind of closure, then maybe you have access to these kind of hole reinforcements. You can buy these in most paper shops or definitely on Amazon and you just use a regular hole punch that will do the trick as well and actually because this is so sturdy up here you wouldn't necessarily even need the hole reinforcement i think it would look nice especially if you distress it but this is super super stiff and sturdy i'm going to take a gold eyelet because we already have some gold on here And then we add our packaging twine once we are sure that it's completely dry. Just thread it through here. Go over it once and tie a bow, that's it. It's the next day and I want to go back inside. There's a couple more things I want to do to finish this little envelope journal off. I think this here needs something. It's a bit too plain for me. 
I want to work with this image and I want to make a little collage with it. So I want to start off by just tearing around these florals. For this collage, I don't want the rectangle shape. How about some of this for underneath? I think the red goes really well with the rest. I've glued down all these pieces and before I glue this piece down, I want to do the same Kintsugi technique. So I'll just crumple this up first. This time I'm not tearing into it, I just want to have the folds. Then I'll add some glue. This time I'm using PVA glue just because I'm almost out of the three-in-one glue. I urgently need to order some more and I will scrunch this up as I place it down. Just pushing towards the middle in different directions to get these beautiful, delicate creases. We don't want big mounds. Just want like really thin lines basically. And we'll highlight them again with the gold. What I love about Kintsugi is not only that it's visually very aesthetic, I also love the philosophy behind it, which is that it treats breakage and repair as part of the history of an object rather than something that needs to be disguised. And I love that because you can, of course, transfer that to our lives because I think we're all somehow broken inside from things we have experienced in our lives, in our pasts. And why do we need to cover those up? These experiences make us who we are today. And so why not highlight them to showcase the beautiful person that we have become through all these experiences? And I want to add the word Kintsugi up here. I have this scrap left from one of the book pages that I used in here. And this is perfect vintage paper to stamp on. So I'm using my clickable alphabet stamps. I have a set of these linked for you in the description box below from Amazon. I'm going to use my Jet Black Archival Ink. I also wanted to add a few words to the journaling cards. On this one, I added beautiful. And these words are from the Digital Collage Club sheet called some very important words. There's two sheets that you get. I thought they were rather big, so I printed them at 50%. And they were still quite large, so keep that in mind when you print those. Maybe you want to reduce it even more, especially for a small journal like this. Then I added the word perfect on this page because I love how perfect the imperfection of Kintsugi is. And on this journaling card, I added the word mindful. Actually, the word was mindfulness, but I cut it off to just be mindful. I also made two more cards to go on the front and the back. One says cherish, one says believe. And I used the same techniques that I have shown you. The cherish one goes in the front underneath the flap because I think it's nice when it sticks out like this. And same thing for the back. I'm going to add it like that. And the last thing I want to add is the word journal, which is also from that page. Obviously, I have grunged that up quite a bit already. And I want to find a way to have that dangling here. I'm going to start out by gluing this on one of our scrap piece of papers. Then I will just cut that a bit smaller. And glue that onto some cardstock. And then I'll cut a rectangle around that, leaving some space here for an eyelet.
And now we can just put our twine through this and it can just hang here. So our little grungy journal is completed. Let's have a final flip through. So we have our flap. We have our first card. Then we open it up. We have the Kintsugi with this collage. We have our first tuck spot with our journaling card. Then we can open this. We have our second collage. We can take this out. We have some writing space here. We have our first little booklet here. We have another pocket here, which we haven't actually used, so we could put something in there. We have our second tuck spot with the second Kintsugi journaling card. We have our second little booklet here. And we have another pocket here into which we could add something. All the digitals are listed below. So I hope you enjoy making your grungy envelope journal. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.